Because every time we're doing this, we are sending a calming signal to the brain. We're calming down the nervous system. Daily tapping is like energy hygiene. Over a thousand videos on YouTube, by the way, and over 48 million views. Man, I wish I had more success in my life and I don't know why not. And not even paying attention to the things that we're doing on a daily basis that block our success. You, you can't be poor enough to make anyone else rich. You can't be sick enough to make anyone else healthy. You can't be sad enough to make anyone else happy. It's deciding I am worthy of treating myself with self-love, whether that's giving myself a healthier body or giving myself healthier finances or giving myself healthier relationships and doing what it takes to create those. Listener, be advised. If you stay till the end of this interview, you will have the tools to be, do, and have anything that you want in this life. Welcome to my guest, Brad Yates. Brad, please tell us if what I just said is true. <laughs> well, I can't promise that by the end you're going to have everything, but you will have tools that will uh, certainly help you feel better, do better, and live better in so many ways. Yes. Okay. This conversation is going to be amazing. Brad, you've had a fascinating journey with emotional freedom techniques. Can you share how you first encountered EFT and what drew you to it initially? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually uh, started out as an actor and uh, had traveled the world doing theater and had gone to Los Angeles to become a movie star, as one does. And uh, while I was there, I met this woman, fell in love and got married. And when our first child was on the way, I thought I might need a backup career. <laughs> and I, I played a doctor on days of our lives, but not enough to uh, support a family. So I saw an ad for hypnotherapy school and I'd always been fascinated by the power of the mind. So I went through this training, started building a small hypnotherapy practice alongside my acting career. And after a couple of years, when our second child was on the way, I thought, you know, as much as I love acting, this is what I'm meant to be doing. This is what I feel called to do. So uh, we left Los Angeles, moved to Northern California, and through some other hypnotherapists, I heard about this energy psychology conference going on in Las Vegas, where they were teaching this tapping process called EFT. I thought, well, I'll give this a try. What the heck? And just found it a fascinating process of relieving stress by tapping on acupuncture points. And the, the most amazing thing for me at that one, uh, during that training was when Gary Craig, the founder of VFT, uh, leading the workshop, gave everybody a piece of chocolate. And he said, okay, on a scale of zero to 10, how much would you like the chocolate? And I was a bit of a chocoholic at the time. And I'm like eight, nine. And we just tapped for a few minutes. And after the tapping, I could not eat the chocolate. I had about as much interest in that as I did the foil wrapper. And, and I didn't eat chocolate for two years after that. And wow. uh, I, I recovered, don't worry. But, um, but it was like, wow, this, this is profound. So after that, I started introducing it little by little into my hypnotherapy practice. And little by little over time, uh, it became my main tool. So it's just, it's so simple that people can do it on themselves anytime. And I just really liked the way it worked. Awa, my friend who um, I believe you've met, and I think mm -hmm. she's actually come and seen you live somewhere. She has. Yeah, yes. well, she and Jeanette have been to my uh, a couple of my live workshops. Yeah, yes, They're we awesome. actually we just attended an NLP training together, and what you're talking about the chocolate, um, we did the same thing, probably a different technique that we use, hmm. but she wanted to try giving up rice. She is, I guess, you know, <laughs> has a uh, a lot of cravings for rice, and so she wanted to remove that from her diet, and I practice the technique on her and apparently it worked yeah. but you said two years and yours came back so we'll see well and I can it's not like a, the craving came back mm -hmm. but the inability to for, for two years is like I just had no interest whatsoever and uh so and now I can I can go through and there can be chocolate in the house and if I'm like yeah I don't feel like eating sweets right now then I can do some tapping or oftentimes just like, it's, it's not an issue, mm -hmm. but it's not like, I just absolutely cannot touch it. <laughs> right. Right. So, okay. If the listeners 
aren't really familiar with EFT, they just learned that now there's this technique where they can tap on their face and they can <laughs> they can stop <laughs> eating foods that they're craving. Uh, what else can EFT do? What other things can you maybe improve in your life or let go of using EFT? Yeah. So there is a catchphrase with EFT, try it on everything with whatever changes you want to make in your life. And I know that just, it sounds like, oh, it's a panacea. And that kind of sounds like magic bullet and you kind of dismiss it when, you know, you might dismiss it hearing that. But here's the thing that basically what we're doing is we're downregulating stress. So when we want to make a change of some kind in life, it's, uh, there's a part of us that tries to resist that. We like things to be the same. Even if our lives are crap, it's our crap. We know where it goes. We know that we handled it yesterday. So it's a pretty safe bet we'll be able to handle it today. We won't enjoy it, but we're confident we're going to handle it. And if we try to make changes to something that we're not sure we can handle, we're going to have some resistance in the form of stress. So this process, which I know if, if you're new to EFT, it looks a little strange, but it's worthwhile, but trust me, it's based on acupuncture. And so for thousands of years in Chinese medicine, they've said there's a flow of energy through the body along these pathways that are called meridians. And when our energy gets stuck or uh, disrupted, then we don't feel so good. And so uh, in traditional Chinese medicine, the doctor would stick needles in these key points to stimulate that healthy flow of energy, correcting all kinds of um, diseases and things like that. So when, uh, rather than using needles, we're just tapping with our fingertips. So when we look at something like with a food craving, there's a part of it that says, I feel uncomfortable if I don't eat that. I'm having a stress response telling me I need this to help me feel better emotionally. And instead of relying on chocolate or rice or whatever it might be to make myself feel better, I can calm the stress down by tapping these points. Now, this is true in all kinds of different areas uh, with physical ailments. And, you know, I played a doctor on TV. I'm not a, an actual doctor, so I'm not making any medical claims. But there are plenty of doctors who have said that a large percentage of what we experience as physical illness has a stress component to it. You know, that stress either causes or worsens most of the things that trouble us. So if we can downregulate the stress, we can at least feel better emotionally even if we don't notice necessarily physical changes, but there are plenty of stories of, of physical shifts that happen with the tapping. Uh, in terms of relationships, how we show up with different people, uh, we're able to cha make changes in our behavior because stress and, and uncomfortable emotions run our behavior. So if we can calm that down, we can make shifts. We can change our financial situation. And someone said, oh, come on, how is tapping gonna change my money situation? And I said, okay, do you believe that your behavior has something to do with your money situation? And they're like, well, yeah, obviously. Okay, do you believe that stress has anything to do with your behavior? Well, yeah, okay. There are scientific studies showing that tapping can alleviate stress. So if we can tap to alleviate stress, then we can shift our behavior, we can make a difference in our financial situation. Mm -hmm. So, and that's true of pretty much any area of life. If we want to make changes, what we want to do is clear the stress that creates that resistance. And then we have greater freedom to succeed in every area of life. Mm, very well put. And now I'm wondering, because you have different length videos, which by the way, before the end of this interview, we will be doing a tap. So you want to stick around for that. You have different length videos and I have watched many of them I've tapped along with you countless times and I always pick the shorter ones because you know I want the quick picks I, I'm in a rush I have things to do give me the results I want in two minutes rather than doing a 15 minute video does it matter is it are you better off doing the longer ones you know it, it's so funny you say this Jessica because I was talking the other day to a, a YouTube strategist you know because mm -hmm. I, I just always wanted to expand my channel and and reach as many people as possible. I want to have as big of an impact as possible because I know the benefits of tapping. It's like, I want to get the whole world tapping. Mm -hmm. And this person said, well, you know, for, for success on YouTube, you need longer videos. And I'm like, that just, I hear from people all the time. 
you know, if it's over five minutes, I just don't have time for it. So uh, it, it's so funny that, that there are these competing thoughts. So that's why I've made a lot of shorter videos, but there are times where I'm leading a tapping process and it's a very intuitive process for me. If I'm talking about a particular subject and I'm thinking about what might be going on for someone, what are the thoughts that might be driving this behavior? And sometimes so many thoughts are coming through. It's like, I, the, I'm, I always have a timer going on and it's like, I know where I'm at five minutes, but there's just more here that has to be said. I can't, I can't cut it off here. So I want to cover as much as possible. And people will sometimes say, could you do the same thing, but make it shorter? And I said, if I were going to make it shorter, I would just would have stopped at three minutes or five minutes. So if you only have three or five minutes, just stop the video at three or five minutes. Not like I would have said all of that more quickly. <laughs> right. um, but it, it, it's like, okay, it's like washing your hands. You know, during the pandemic, it's like, wash your hands for 20 seconds while you're singing happy birthday. Okay, but if you have, um, if you have been gardening and you have some topsoil on your hands and you go and wash your hands, it's gonna take a certain amount of time to wash your hands. If you've been working on your car and you have, uh, you know, grease on your hands, 20 seconds ain't gonna do it. <laughs> so depending on what you're working on, a longer process is going to be more beneficial. Uh, going to the gym. You know, if you go to the gym and work out for 15 minutes, you're going to get results, but not the same results you're going to get if you go to the gym and do a half an hour or, or an hour. But there are benefits to even tapping for just a few minutes. You know, any tapping that you do is beneficial. And so I always tell folks, if you have more time, great, tap, tap for longer. But if you only have five minutes to tap, if you only have two minutes to tap, because every time we're doing this, we are sending a calming signal to the brain. We're calming down the nervous system. And if we can only calm it down a little bit, then that is beneficial. Well, what if that person who is asking you that question, if they just washed it on 1.5X or 2X? <laughs> <laughs> and just tap really fast. <laughs> right. <laughs> If, if they can comfortably repeat what I say and tap during that time, yeah. I, you know, I haven't, uh, I haven't tried that. And it's funny because there are a lot of videos and, and audio books that I listen to at uh, 1.2 or 1.5. Yeah, exactly. But I haven't tried that with uh, tapping because I, you know, try to make it at a comfortable rate. Right. But uh, hey, give it a shot. You have managed to bring a unique, creative, and often humorous approach to EFT. How do you believe humor enhances the healing process? To me, it's the spoonful of sugar that helps the medicine go down. And, uh, you know, there's all kinds of information about, about laughter and healing. Dr. Norman Cousins saying that laughter is the best medicine. And when we're talking about these things that are troubling us, especially when we're talking about, you know, really upsetting things like, oh, this upsetting thing that happened in the past. And if we're just going, okay, let's talk about all the sadness and the misery and all these horrible things. It's kind of like, I don't want to go through that. <laughs> so if we can bring some lightness to it, it just uh, makes it easier to go through. It can, it can have all kinds of possible benefits and it's not a, it's not a matter of making light of it and being dismissive of it. You know, someone once accused me of that. I said, I take my work very seriously. I just don't always present it in a serious manner. Mm. You know, I'll, I'll give it the gravity that it deserves, but I want to give it the levity that I can so that uh, it, it makes it a more enjoyable process. And, you know, there's all kinds of benefits that can come from that. Oh, I love that. Can you say that again? That one piece of, <laughs> not the whole thing. <laughs> Let's give you a whole lecture there, Jessica. Which part was that? <laughs> the, the piece about your word being serious, but. Uh, oh, I take my work seriously. I just uh, don't always present it in a serious manner. Right. I like to give it the levity that's possible. Yes. Oh, that's so great. I want to talk about your children's book. The Wizard's Wish. Mm -hmm. It's a best-selling book that you authored. Uh, what inspired you to write a children's book about EFT? I have a lot of nieces and nephews. And 
I love, you know, being the weird, crazy aunt and getting them into these holistic approaches. <laughs> on my desk. So there's the wizard's wish. Yeah. I, um, it, it, it came out of, uh, when I was interviewed for the film, The Tapping Solution, we talked a lot about tapping for kids. And I didn't have a, a lot of focus on working with kids at that time, even though I had two young children at the time, it was not, uh, and I tapped with them at times, it was not a, a focus of my practice, but we were talking about this concept of, of tapping with kids. And because when I'm working with folks, you know, they can be in their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and some of the stuff that we're addressing is stuff that happened in the first five years of their life. Mm -hmm. And just the, the idea of, wow, if we could teach tapping to kids and they have an upsetting event and they tap to clear the emotion that day, rather than being trapped in their body and making a, a misinformed decision about themselves, like, oh, people just don't like me, or I'm not good at this or something else, that per that kid's life is just opens up and there's so many other possibilities so uh, so we talked about uh, in in my interview uh, about what's possible for kids if they tapped and then i thought oh, i want to look more at this and having two young kids we loved reading stories to our kids i thought wow if i could come up with a bedtime story that would be cool and i always loved uh things about wizards big harry potter fan i've got a whole bunch of harry potter wands here on my wall and so i had this idea of a a wizard who uses his fingertips as a wand to uh, to do the magic to clear out the the yucky feelings. Fun That's, way to introduce it. Yeah, yeah. You have collaborated with Jack Canfield, Dr. Joe Vital. So, how have these experiences influenced your approach and personal development? Having these collaborations. Yeah. When I, when I wrote my first book, which I called um, The Key to Success, I intended it as a companion book for all the other self-help books out there. Because what I saw was all this really great information that didn't necessarily address the, pe uh, the resistance that people would have to making these changes. And I had seen this in myself prior to learning EFT, was I'd read a great book and go, oh, I'm really inspired. That's really great. And then not long after that, I'd be back to my same behavior and doing things as I had always done it before. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to say, okay, take all this great information. And then with whatever resistance you have, let's do some tapping on it. And when, uh, when I first found out about Joe, we, he uh, was teaching a lot of the same stuff uh, as um, Abraham Hicks and the law of attraction. But he and I were both saying the same thing take what you're envisioning, but then look at what your resistance might be to it. Because the, the standard practice was think about what you really want and just feel really good about it. And then just allow that to happen. But it didn't address the fact that we're not aware of all of the unconscious uh, negative thoughts and beliefs that we might have. So if you want to have a lot of money, you put up your vision board with the, the yacht and the private plane and the beach house and all that stuff and just allow yourself to feel really good about it. But at a conscious level, you know, five to 10% of our mind is going, yes, that's awesome. The other 90, 95% is going, but remember money is the root of all evil and rich people are greedy and bad and we don't want to be those people. And so our mind, our subconscious mind, the much more powerful part of our mind is going, that's fine. You go ahead and fantasize about that. You pretend that you're getting excited about it. We're going to make sure it doesn't happen. Because while I think I'm feeling really good about it, there are parts of me that are not feeling positive about that. So Joe and I were both saying, address that, um, that feeling. That's why we created a program called Money Beyond Belief that was all about, okay, let's, let's clear up these negative associations to money so that you are much more open to allowing that abundance. Okay, so then when you're doing the tapping, you're, we're talking about limiting beliefs. Do you need to let go? Do you need to tap on letting go of these limiting beliefs before you start tapping on the things that you want to bring in? Because if you tap on the things you want to bring in, is it basically not going to work because you still have these underlying subconscious beliefs? You could be tapping just saying, I'm, I'm rich, I'm rich, and there'll be benefits because when I, when we're saying affirmations, and affirmations are great, but the problem is that if we have that an underlying negative belief underneath, 
then that's going to be coming up. If yeah. I say, I, uh, you know, I weigh my goal weight, I weigh my goal weight. And part of me is like, are you kidding? You are 20 pounds overweight or whatever it might be. That's what's coming up in my energy system. And so that's what I'm, where I'm really, uh, you know, what I'm really feeling. But if we're tapping while saying that, you know, I am my goal weight, then the body starts to relax and say, well, I can certainly get there. And I can, and I can, and, and whatever reasons that I have for blocking it. So the extent to which we don't have what we say we want tends to be the extent to which we are resisting it because it doesn't feel safe. So self-sabotage is simply misguided self-love. When I, I might say, I want to be, have a certain physical well-being or a certain amount of money, but then I'll go and spend money foolishly. I will go and eat a box of donuts. I will do something like that. And then I'll beat myself up about that. And I want to be compassionate with myself and recognize, okay, this, what, what looks like self-sabotage is misguided self-love because some part of me is trying to protect me from something that I don't believe is safe. I may have beliefs about, well, the last time I was at my goal weight, something really bad happened, or my friends were all jealous of me, or, or this or that. The last time I had a lot of money, I had this, or I never had that much money. My family never had that much money, and my family would be jealous if I had that much money. So I have all these negative associations. So when I'm thinking about that, the money, the goal weight, whatever the goal might be, that's in my energy system that's causing stress. So the tapping is, is benefiting me. Now it can be more profound if we focus directly on what the belief is. So, you know, I have Michelangelo's David, a picture of him up there. I've got a statue here. I've got David's everywhere mm. because Michelangelo said the statues are already there. Perfect inside the marble. All I have to do is chip away what doesn't belong to reveal the masterpiece inside. So that's what we're doing with tapping. So, we focus on the limiting belief to chip away what doesn't belong. And the positive is already there. There's a part of us underneath that already knows that abundance is our birthright because we see it every day. I can go out and see all the leaves on the tree. I can go out and see the ocean. I can go out and see the stars at night. Part of me already knows that abundance is, is my birthright. I just need to chip away the misunderstandings about money or love or whatever else it might be that I might be resisting. So Michelangelo didn't, didn't take the block of marble and draw a smiley face on it. He didn't try to add something to it. He just took away. So that's what we're doing with the tapping. But it's just like with a, um, if you spill coffee on your counter and you grab a rag to wipe it up, you're focusing on the coffee. But whether you're saying there's coffee here, there's coffee here, or you're saying clean countertop, clean countertop, you're still cleaning it. And you could even say orange juice because people will say, well, you know, when I, if I'm in a live workshop and I'm tapping with somebody on some issue and someone else might say, that's not my issue. If I say those words, am I going to create that? No, if I'm cleaning up coffee and I say orange juice, orange juice, it's not like now there's going to be orange juice on my counter because I was saying orange juice and not coffee. And this is a cleaning process and we can do it silently, even doing silently. We're going to be clearing out stress and, and helping ourselves be in a much more open place to think more clearly and to take better actions and get the results that we want. Just want to repeat this one more time. Self-sabotage is misguided self-love. I had to write that down. Um, I don't know if you saw uh, Jeanette and I are doing a series of little Instagram quickies where they say little quotes and they did one for that. <laughs> oh, and that came from you. I have to go comment on it now. Okay, so yes, the orange juice coffee concern actually makes me think of a, a concern. So if we are tapping and we are getting to this place where either we want to lose weight or we want we have a desired outcome. And so because we're tapping, our behaviors are going to change to attract that desired outcome. But what if we surround ourselves with the same people that we had that share that limiting belief that we are in the process of letting go of. Is that going to influence us if we're still constantly hearing those limiting beliefs while we're tapping, trying to release them? It can, but we, it, 
what causes our emotions is not what happens, but what we think about it. So we can be in a room with people saying things that we go, well, that's not true. <laughs> but if it, if it affects us, it's because part of us is not sure. It's like if we, uh, for a, a big concern for a lot of people is the fear of being seen. And this is what blocks them from having success in all kinds of areas because they're imagining, oh, this person's going to think I'm not good enough. They're going to have these negative thoughts, these judgments. I'm only afraid of that if I have those, own, those thoughts about myself. I'm putting thoughts in other people's mind. If I think you're going to think that I'm an idiot, it's because I'm already afraid that I might be an idiot. If I know, no, I'm plenty smart. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes, but I'm plenty smart. I'm going to expect that that's what you're going to think of me too. And so if, uh, and if you then say, you know, Brad, you're not so bright, then I might say, okay, well, you don't really know me. You just misunderstood something from what I've said or something like that. So likewise, if I'm around these other people, if they're saying things that I know aren't true, I might say, okay, well, they're misinformed. And if it's bothering me, if I'm taking it on, it's like, oh, I still have some more tapping to do. I'm obviously still holding on to that in my energy system. But I also may find these aren't the people I want to hang out with anymore because they're, they're stuck. It's like having a, a bunch of people that are all standing in the mud. It's the mud club, you know? We've got jackets. <laughs> and, uh, and if we try to get up on dry land, then they go, oh, Look who thinks they're better than us. And then we say, oh, you're right. And we step down into the mud again. And, and, and part of us says, and that's a noble thing because I'm, you know, I'm not trying to be better than they are. I'm not trying to be too big for my britches or whatever. It's not noble because what I'm then saying is I have the capacity to create a better life, but these losers don't. And so I'm going to sacrifice myself because they have no ability to improve their lives. That's insulting. That's not noble. So what I'd rather do is get up on dry land and say, come up here. We got better jackets up here. <laughs> this is a better club. And if they choose not to, and if they're going to say, you know, no, no, it's just, we should only, we should only stand in the mud. I'm not going to sacrifice myself and try to make them more comfortable with their limiting beliefs. You know, so I'll say, Hey, if that's where you want to be, but I would rather encourage you to have a better life. Yeah. Okay. That's it. That's, that's what I was thinking that, uh, you, your behaviors change. So then the people in your life are going to end up changing. So say that the person that wants to lose weight, they need to go to bed early because they're going to wake up and go to the gym. So now they're not going out and eating food late at night somewhere with their friends or going out to a bar, whatever it may be. Yeah. And so now they don't have anything in common with that friend. And so the people in their life evolves. Yeah. And peer pressure is a, is a real thing, you know, but we can say, oh, well, all my friends are staying up and um, going out and partying. So, you know, I don't want to make them hungry. So I should do that too. Mm -hmm. What if your friend started shooting up heroin and saying, well, come on, you know, in for a penny, in for a pound. If you're going to stay up late drinking with us, you should stay up late, you know, shooting up with us. Are you going to then say, all right, you know, whatever. It's like, no, he's saying I, I deserve better and I cannot compromise myself enough to improve their lives. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying, because part of them knows what I'm doing is not right. This is not the ideal life. This is, yeah, it's fun, but it's not the life that I really want to create, but everybody else is doing it. And we could be in a room full of people and we're saying, oh, all right, I'm going to compromise my goals for everybody else here. And for all I know, everybody else is doing the same thing. And everybody else is thinking, I want to improve my health. I want to improve my finances, but I'm holding myself back for everybody else here. So it's like, okay, be the trendsetter. Say, you know what? I think we're all meant for more. I think we're all capable of more. Let's, uh, let's instead of in, you know, encouraging each other to you know, sabotage our success, let's encourage each other to create awesomeness so that when we do go out and party, we can like book a flight to Paris and go out and party in Paris you know, for the weekend. <laughs>
Yes. You know, and on occasion do that and we do it intentionally and we do it at a, at, at a higher level. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Where do you draw the line? It's also boundaries. And I don't remember who said this quote, but it's, uh, you can't be sick enough to help, or you can't be sick enough to help the sick people get well. Um, I'm not gonna say I came up with it. That's something I do say a lot. I'll have, I'll say, you, you can't be poor enough to make anyone else rich. You can't be sick enough to make anyone else healthy. You can't be sad enough to make anyone else happy. But you can be healthy enough to be of service to other people. You can be wealthy enough to be of service to other people. You can be happy enough to be of service to other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not only that, but you're also giving those other people permission to do the same, to hold themselves up to that same standard. Absolutely. Absolutely. As we set ourselves free, we invite other people to be free as well. With all this said, EFT is often met with skepticism, which we yeah. briefly uh, touched on in the beginning. How do you address skepticism towards EFT? And what evidence do you, do you usually present when it comes to demonstrating its efficacy? Yeah. When we're doing it, hopefully, if someone is open-minded enough to give it a try, hopefully they at least feel some reduction in stress, if not a profound feeling. Sometimes it's a very profound feeling but not always sometimes just like well i'm not noticing a lot but i feel more a little bit more relaxed it's like great even if that was the only thing that happened you lowered some stress stress and the cortisol in our bodies has all kinds of harmful effects over time so if if you're doing this and the only thing you get is i feel a little bit calmer over time that's going to make a big difference in your health and well-being and in your thinking and your behavior uh, there is a growing body of scientific research uh, a lot of it being done by my friend, Dr. Peter, Peter Stapleton. She's a, uh, a professor of psychology at a university in Australia showing me. So it's not just people tap and say, yeah, I think I feel better. It's like, no, we have, we have biological markers showing the cortisol levels, the stress hormone in our body being dramatically reduced. We have fMRI studies now showing brain scans and seeing the activity in the brain and how that normalizes after tapping. So there is, when people say, oh, where's the, where's the research? It's like, right here, here's a link, go and check it out. But for a lot of these people, it's funny because I'll say, I know you're asking this, but does research really play a role in your life? Because I'll bet if I followed you around all day long, I'd see you doing a bunch of things that research says is bad for you. You're probably, you know, you might be smoking, you're probably eating potato chips or sugar or all kinds of things. Like if you're really interested in research, I can go show you research saying knock that off. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people throw up this, oh, where's the research thing just as a, as a barrier, because it's like, I'm uncomfortable with this idea of making changes in my life. And so I want to find a reason to discount that. And I'm, and I'm not saying that to make fun of anybody because we, everybody's doing the best they can with their programming. So uh, I'm, I'm not shaming anybody who, who has that resistance. It's you're not bad or stupid. You're not weak or lazy. You just have programming that tells you don't make changes. And if someone tries to show you a way to make changes, find a reason not to. Mm -hmm. and, and if someone says, no, it looks too stupid. I'm not gonna do it. It's like, okay. I'm, it's, I'm, I'm offering an invitation to, to try something that can help you in all kinds of different ways. And, and I totally get it if, you, if you're not interested. There are things that people have offered me. It's like, yeah, I, I'm not interested in that. And that's okay. There's, we're, we have choice. So if, it's, if people say, yeah, I don't want to try that, fine. If they say it's stupid and doesn't work, it's like, well, there I have to beg to differ with you because the, there's all kinds, you know, the anecdotal evidence alone, but the, but the research shows that it is just because you didn't notice a difference doesn't prove anything. That's like someone saying, you know, sit, doing three sit-ups and saying, I don't have a rock hard six pack, sit-ups don't work. And then going all over the internet on social media, I tried sit-ups, I did three sit-ups and I don't have a six pack. So sit-ups don't work. It's like, Okay, Sparky, <laughs> you go you gotta, ahead. <laughs> you got to do the longer video and not watch it on 2X. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, 
or do some work with another practitioner because the way I do it isn't going to be right for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, some people love the Rolling Stones and some people would rather listen to Eric Clapton and uh, some love both, but it's not that one of them is doing rock and roll wrong. It's just that people have different tastes for different reasons. Looking to the future, how do you see the field of EFT evolving and what role do you hope to play in its development? Well, I, I would love to see the whole world using this. Just to me, daily tapping is like energy hygiene. So we have physical hygiene, like brushing our teeth, taking showers. Most of us do it on a regular basis, generally a daily basis as maintenance. Most of us don't wait until someone around us is holding their nose. And then we say, oh, that's right. I'm taking a shower in three weeks. Um, you know, we don't look at our teeth and go, there's nothing green coming out of there. Nah, don't need to brush my teeth. We, we do it as needed. And generally, even before we're aware that it's needed. But with stress, most of us don't have a healthy way of, of maintaining that. And most of us are walking around with ambient levels of stress more than we recognize. Most of us are walking around with one of these that's constantly saying, hey, here's something else to be upset about. And we just take it and that stress builds up and we don't have a healthy way of cleaning that. So this to me is just energetic hygiene or emotional hygiene to clear that out. So I I would encourage people to do it on a daily basis. So I would love to get it out there. You know, like brushing your teeth up until the early 1900s was not a regular thing. Now, most people do it. I, I would love to see that happen. Uh, trying to do my part with, you know, over a thousand videos on YouTube, trying to make it as accessible as possible. Over a thousand videos on YouTube, by the way, and over 48 million views. What do you think has been the key to your success on the platform? Well, it helps that I had a background as an actor, so I was comfortable on camera. <laughs> so a lot of people turn on the camera and get very uncomfortable. But, uh, and, and bring in the humor so that it's enjoyable to watch and not just, oh, okay, I'm going to go and watch five minutes of Brad talking about misery <laughs> while I'm tapping on my face. But uh, yeah, just trying to make it as accessible as possible and, and just having the intention of trying to help folks feel better, do better and live better. The videos Thank have you. changed my life and I will forever be grateful to Jeanette and Ala for introducing me. <laughs> I have a question. Well, I actually have a couple more questions, but what have you personally tapped on the most in your life? Oh, that, that's a tough one, Jessica, because I tap on so many things. Just if anything bothers me, you know, if I watch something on the news and I, I feel, okay, that's, that's emotionally upsetting. I'll you tap. watch the news? Well, not often. Okay. See, my, my wife follows the news and sometimes I can't help it here, mm-hmm. but you know, but I picked the, you know, I like to be aware in a general, I don't, I don't spend all day watching it by any means, but I do like to find out, okay, what's going on in the world? Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's some things you just can't help but, but hear about. And, uh, but in terms of, I mean, I tap it first thing in the morning and, and I know with the idea that EFT is designed to help you clear what's upsetting you. Please don't get the idea that I wake up upset every morning. It's like, ah, it's another crappy day, even though I'm awake again today. No, I just want to uh, be as clear as possible. So I will tap while saying affirmations. I'll tap while saying prayers. I'll just tap silently sometimes. And uh, there's a phrase I actually learned from Joe. Uh, I think he learned from someone else. It's, I'm, I'm grateful for the blessings that I have. I'm grateful for the blessings I'm receiving. And I'll just tap while saying that and just allowing myself to be open to, you know, clearing anything that might be in my energy system saying, yeah, but it's not safe to have more blessings. It's not safe to move forward in life. It's not safe to have more success. Any of that stuff that might come up, I'm just clearing that out. Yes, I'm okay with having more blessings in my life, whatever they might be. And, uh, but I've, you know, certainly in terms of allowing myself to be seen, I, you know, I look back, I was an actor, but I had a lot of blocks to success and I sabotaged my career in a number of different ways. So over these years, I've cleared a lot of that. And so that's one of the, one of the secrets to the success I've had is I've cleared a lot of the reasons why I shouldn't or couldn't have more success. 
Uh, it's allowed me to make healthier choices, to break old habits and things like that. Promise you, after having this conversation, I am getting back on the EFT wagon. I, to be honest, <laughs> this is a confession. I have not tapped in many months, but yeah, that that's incredibly convincing. And what's going on there, Jessica? I because I, I hear this from people who say, you know, I was tapping and I was getting all kinds of results, and I just stopped, and I don't know why. I say mm -hmm. because you were getting results, because some part of you said, I'm. I'm moving away from what everyone in my crowd is, or I'm, I'm having more success than my family had, or I'm, things are better than I believe they're supposed to be. Yeah. And at an unconscious level, it's like, well, the tapping might be helping with that. We better knock that off. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's gotta be uh, a like subconscious block. Self-sabotage is brilliant. Mm -hmm. Now knock it off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, there's so many different things that we could tap on um, before we end this. It could be the self-sabotage, the self-love, uh, receiving blessings. Yeah. But before we do that, uh, where would you like to send the listeners after we finish? Uh, probably the best is just to go to my website, tapwithbrad.com. I have, uh, there's two different um, five-day programs that are both free. One's called Tap Into Your Best Self, and it's designed to help you uh, have greater levels of self-confidence, self-esteem, self-love. And the other one is called Success Beyond Belief, and it's about clearing the blocks to success, those reasons why you feel you couldn't or shouldn't have success, those reasons that you're probably not consciously aware of. You know, you're sitting there going, man, I wish I had more success in my life, and I don't know why not. And not even paying attention to the things that we're doing on a daily basis that block our success. The, the times that we, you know, oh, oh, I just forgot to go to the gym today. Or I, ah, oh, man, I totally forgot that I had that interview today. I can't believe it. Oh, well, it's brilliant. And don't kick yourself for being stupid. It's brilliant because part of you is saying, yeah, that would have changed my life. And I'm not ready to have my life change. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so tapwithbrad.com, everyone. And then I have one final question for you. And right. you're not allowed to answer with EFT. <laughs> <laughs> what is your number what is your number one health tip? Whether it's mindset, diet and nutrition, physical, emotional, just the one piece of advice that you would like everyone to know. And I can't say EFT. No. Jessica, it would be tapping. <laughs> little loophole there um loophole. no no it, it, mindset it is mindset because tapping tapping is just a tool okay it's it, it's just a tool for giving ourselves the freedom to have a different mindset if you already have that mindset if you can if you can already say i'm gonna eat in a healthy way today i'm gonna exercise i'm gonna get up and i'm gonna do this and that and, and believe that you're worthy of that. That's part of the mindset is believing that I'm worthy and deserving of things being better. Mm -hmm. and then great. If you have resistance to that, then tapping <laughs> to clear the resistance. Yes, there's a tap for that. So I might say the number one thing is self-love. You know, just, just oh. deciding I am worthy of treating myself with self-love, whether that's giving myself a healthier body or giving myself healthier finances or giving myself healthier relationships and doing what it takes to create those, then, uh, then that's the key. But it's self-love is I'm worthy and deserving of the best this world has to offer. And I'm going to do what it takes to uh, make that happen. Yes. Mindset, self-love, you were speaking my language. What is best for us to tap on in this moment? Well, let's tap on self-love since that's the, the last thing that came up because you know, Lucille Ball said, the first thing you have to do is love yourself. Mm. And, uh, and she was right. It's when we allow ourselves to love ourselves, we're going to do what it takes to make things better in whatever. So whatever area of life, anyone watching this it wants to improve, self-love, allow yourself to treat yourself better and treat yourself to a better experience. And so let's look at, uh, we'll, we'll explore with tapping why, uh, why we might not be doing that. 
So what I'd like to, um, well, first I'm gonna quickly show the, the process so that we don't have to uh, explain it in the process. We're gonna be tapping eight points along the body that, uh, that are used in acupuncture. We're gonna take our index and middle finger and with the fingertips, we're going to, uh, so nine points start with the side of the hand. This is just the setup. We start by tapping on the side of the hand while we state whatever uh, issue we wanna tap on. So we say, even though I have this issue, this stress, this, w this nervousness about this report, this anger at Bob, or, uh, or if it's a physical thing, we might say, oh, this, uh, this tension in my shoulders, this pain in my stomach. We, we address that issue by saying, even though I have this issue, I choose to love and accept myself. Stay in a level of acceptance because what we resist persists and just trying to fight against it isn't helping. So we wanna say, I'm acknowledging that I have this and uh, this is what I'm addressing. So we'll say that, repeat that three times and then we'll go through these eight points uh, by and repeat the phrase. So all the stress or whatever the issue is, side of the eye, all the stress, right under the eye, all the stress, under the nose, under the lower lip. Now right here where your collarbones come together, it's on either side, uh, the points that we're using. So you can just make a fist and tap right over, uh, right there with that little U-shape at the base of your throat is. Next point is about four inches below your armpit. So it's right about bra strap level. And I'm sure even any guys watching can figure out where that is. And finally, the top of the head. So I just use all of my fingertips and tap around the crown of the head. So that's the, uh, and then we'll, then you take a deep breath and you check uh, how you're feeling about that issue. So we'll, we'll generally rate that. So like the, uh, the tension in my shoulders or this anger at Bob on a scale of zero to 10, how strong is that? Are you furious at Bob? Is the uh, tension in your shoulders excruciating? And then we'll, uh, so we get a, an idea of what that is. Then after we tap through around, we'll then check again. So if I was angry at Bob at an eight out of 10, it might've gone down to a two or three. It might've gone to a zero like that. It might've gone to a 7.75. It's a little bit more breathing room. So any benefits that we get is moving in the right direction. And also what sometimes happens is it's like peeling the layers of an onion. So I might be tapping this anger at Bob, this anger at Bob, this, oh, wait a minute. It's not even Bob, it's Cindy. What Bob did to me reminded me of what Cindy did to me in the third grade. And I never forgave her for that. <laughs> it's like, I've had this tension in my body for decades because of something that happened in the third grade. And now I have the opportunity to start clearing stuff. And that may have been holding me back in all kinds of ways that I didn't even realize. So that's one of the benefits, uh, another benefit of tapping. So that's the, the simple process. I, I, I like to show folks the basic process because we're going to go free form now. It's going to be an intuitive process. And if it's the first experience anyone's had with EFT, they might say, I, I wouldn't know what to say. EFT is too complicated. Not complicated at all. You can repeat the same phrase over and over. You can tap silently. You could tap one point. If you feel like, oh, I just want to tap the collarbone point, or I just want to tap the side of my eye, you're still going to be sending that common signal to your brain and it's going to have benefits. So don't, don't overcomplicate it. And now we're going to complicate it. <laughs> this is so special. I just want everyone to take full advantage of this. This is like its very own masterclass already. And now we get to do this tapping with you in real time. I'm actually going to mute myself so that I can say the words um, and we can just pay attention to what you say. Yeah, that's great because it, it, it might be easier for folks to, to repeat back out loud because when we say things out loud, we tend to be more emotionally engaged. And so the tapping process can be even more effective. If you're someplace where you don't want people to hear you and you tap silently, that's okay as well. So, um, but if you can say it out loud, that's great. So first, what I'm gonna ask you to do is close your eyes, take a deep breath in and hold it and let it go. Just following your breath through your body allowing yourself to be really present right now. Notice what's going on inside. Notice what you feel physically, what you feel emotionally. Maybe rating yourself on a scale of zero to 10. In this case, 10 is a positive. 
10 would be magnificent, awesome, excellent, whatever word you choose to use. And don't judge yourself harshly if the number is much lower than you'd like it to be. Just allow yourself to be curious about that. Why couldn't it or shouldn't it be at a 10? Now, imagine a full-length mirror. Imagine looking at yourself and say, I love myself. Or you can even look at yourself in the mirror and say, I love you. And again, paying attention to what you feel physically and what you feel emotionally. Ask yourself on a scale of zero to 10 how true that feels. And again, please don't judge yourself if the number's lower than you'd like it to be. Just allow yourself to be aware of what thoughts or feelings come up around why you couldn't or shouldn't love yourself more. And you might even think about what you really want in life, those things that you might put on your vision board. You know, finishing the sentence, if I really loved myself, I would dot, dot, dot. I would take better care of my health. I'd create a career that I'd love. I'd allow myself to be happier. Whatever it might be. Just allowing yourself to be aware of these thoughts and feelings. And again, noticing any resistance to loving yourself. Take a deep breath, open your eyes. And then just tap where I tap and repeat back what I say. Even though I might be resisting loving myself, I choose to love and accept myself anyway. Even though I might be resisting loving myself, I choose to love and honor myself anyway. Even though I might be resisting loving myself, or at least resisting loving myself at a 10, because I have all kinds of thoughts and beliefs about why I couldn't or shouldn't love myself that much. And even though I limit how much I love myself, I choose to deeply and completely love, honor, and accept myself. And maybe anyone else who might have contributed to these thoughts. Because I choose to be that free. All these limits on how much I love myself. All these reasons for not loving myself more. And I might have all kinds of reasons. I couldn't possibly love myself more. It would be wrong to love myself more. Maybe I'm afraid that would mean I was arrogant. And I choose to clear that misunderstanding. Arrogance is saying that I'm more awesome than others. And that means I don't understand. <laughs> Loving myself is saying that I'm awesome. And so are other people. And the more I can see it in myself, the more I can see it in other people. And then help them see it. So my self-love is a win-win situation. But part of me might say, Oh, it's easy for you, but you don't know me. You don't know what I've done. You don't know what I failed to do. 
And because of these things, I'm not worthy of love. And I'm processing this idea and these feelings. And I'm allowing myself to be open to the idea that this is nonsense. It's a misunderstanding. The reason I did those things or failed to do things was because I already felt unworthy of love. If I truly knew how awesome I am, if I truly knew how worthy of love I am, I wouldn't have done those things that I regret. So the best way to avoid doing things like that is to recognize how worthy of love I am and treat myself with more love. Clearing the reasons why I couldn't or shouldn't. Clearing these misunderstandings. Clearing them out at a cellular level. And all the way back through my past. Back through all those times in my life where I somehow got the message that I couldn't or shouldn't love myself. Or at least not more. And maybe people told me that I was unlovable. And maybe those people were just crazy. They just didn't know any better. And I'm setting myself free from that misunderstanding. Part of me knows I'm worthy of love. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here tapping on my face right now. Part of me knows I'm worthy of this self-care. And I'm clearing any need to limit that. I choose to love myself a whole bunch. And that gives me greater freedom to succeed and greater freedom to do more good in the world. So I'm really allowing myself to love myself in body, mind, and spirit. Take a deep breath. Close your eyes, go inside, and imagine again looking in that mirror and saying, I love myself or I love you. And notice on a scale of zero to 10 how true that feels now. Hopefully that number has come up. And again, maybe like peeling the layers of the onion and may you may just hit more clarity about Oh, this is why I withhold love from myself. This is why I'm stingy with myself. And those are things you can tap more specifically on. So uh, hopefully you've got more clarity as well as having greater freedom to love yourself. Take a deep breath, open your eyes. And thanks for playing. I'm honored. Thank you. That was amazing. Yes, you are. Thank you. Yes. And my number went way up. Awesome. I'm so excited to share this with everyone, with the world, and get this message out there to everyone. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to share this work with your audience. And thank you to everyone who is willing to play along and you know, see how this might benefit you. Thank you, Brad. And go to the description. You'll find all of his links there. And definitely check out his videos. They will change your life. Mm -hmm.